Did I, Hello? Out? Did I get it to work? Yeah. It, 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 we're good now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. I did give a brief intro. Not sure if you heard it, but um, for anybody who's tuning in now, I see um, the numbers are going up as you've joined. So um, <laughs> Ben okay. McKenzie, sorry. Sorry, I definitely know what I'm doing, guys. Oh, no. It's all good. That's okay. Um, so for everybody who has just joined us, Ben is the author of a new book out this week called Easy Money, Cryptocurrency, Casino Capitalism, and the Golden Age of Fraud, which he co-wrote with journalist and author Jacob Silverman. And for anybody who has questions for Ben, please use the question button at the bottom of the screen, and we'll try to get to some of those at the very end. So welcome, Ben. Thank oh. you. And uh, congratulations for on publishing your your book. Um, definitely exciting. I have to say, if somebody told me that 13 year old me 20 years later would be talking digital currency with a guy on my TV screen, I would not have believed them. But here we are. So I'm pretty sure if you had said that, then you would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, you must have a time machine or something. Uh, yeah, trust me, I don't know. I'm surprised to be here as well. So it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I did not think that I would be talking about cryptocurrency. No, uh, it's fun. And I actually had it on my bucket list this year to read a book on cryptocurrency. Huh. Um, not in the way that I expected, but this is great. Uh, so thank you for writing this. Um, where are you joining us from? Joining today? you from my home in Brooklyn, um, my office here. And uh, yeah, wonderful. That again, that so, again, it's work at work from home, which is great, unless my kids bother me. So, you know, if a, if a two year old comes in, you're screaming just just now. Okay, noted. Um, so, I guess the first question, you know, Indigo customers are joining us today. They love books, but some may or may not know what cryptocurrency is. So, to just start out, like very quickly, just an overview of, of what it sure. is. Sure. You don't need to know what it is. I mean, I'll explain it in there, but this is not a book about, it's about crypto, but it's really about money and lying. Um, and I know about money because I have a degree in economics and uh, I've made a little bit of it in two decades of show business. But I know about lying because I'm an actor and I do it for a living. So, you know, when cryptocurrencies are calling themselves currencies, they're actually not currencies economically because they don't do what money does. Um, you know, most of us are aware that one of the things money does is you can buy stuff with it. <laughs> you can actually take it and, you know, like buy the things that you, that you need. It's called medium of exchange in, uh, in economics. Um, and you obviously cryptos, you can't do that. Right. Uh, you, I live in Brooklyn. If I tried to go to my neighborhood deli and buy a bagel with Bitcoin, um, they would look at me like I was crazy. I actually tried this and, and they did <laughs> actually look at me like I was crazy. Um, and they're not used as, as money, right? People were putting real money into them and hoping that the price would go up and they could make some real money off of them by after selling. And, but that's an investment, right? That's not a, that's not a currency. And we regulate investments in the United States um, because if they're unregulated, then uh, then fraud can happen. Then people can steal your money. They'll be like, hey, you know, give me this amount of money and I'll, you know, promise that you'll get this return or whatever. And, you know, you might put your money in. They might initially pay you back or at least on screen, make it look like you pay it. But all they're really doing is getting more people in mm -hmm. and paying off the people they have to with the new investors. That's a Ponzi scheme. Um, and so crypto has a lot of similarities to Ponzi schemes and MLMs. So I go into the cryptography and the computer science of it all, but at the end of the day, it's really not, it's really not about that. It's about mm -hmm. money and it's about lying. Right. So I find, you know, you've said that the marketplace closely resembles a Ponzi scheme or an MLM, and there are so many of those that exist, um, whether they're operating legally or not. So could you get into that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how they resemble them? Sure. Um, one is actually the use of language. Um, I have to do it later. Yeah, yeah. One is the use of language. Um, cryptocurrency, you'll notice, is I got this really like a like difficult to parse language. Like most people, if you ask them about crypto, um, they go, I don't know. It seems really complicated and kind of scammy. And I'm like, no, no, that's that's pretty much right. I mean, it, it's it's complicated in 
one sense. Um, it's actually quite simple in another, but uh, but it is pretty scammy. Cryptos, um, yeah, the, 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 the similarities are the use of, you know, cryptos, we'll, we'll talk about a uh, community. They'll say you're a member of a community when you join mm -hmm. a community. Um, they don't use the word investor or uh, client, um, but these are financial relationships, right? Like you're buying a thing, hoping to make money on it. Um, so it's weird to call it a community. Um, not that communities don't exist in crypto, but they're often online. They're often run through pseudonymous accounts. So you don't literally don't know who you're giving your money to. Right. Um, that's a red flag for for sort of Ponzi schemes and multi-level marketing schemes. Um, let's see more similarities. Um, there are seven red flags for Ponzi schemes uh, on the SEC's website. The Security Exchange Commission in the United States, you know, regulates um, investments that are called securities, and they also regulate Ponzi schemes actually uh, because they're a form of illegal investment schemes. So there's a web page, um, maybe we could link to it of seven red flags for Ponzi schemes. Uh, crypto ticks off five, arguably six of the seven, um, you know, promised guaranteed returns, unregulated in, uh, investments, um, sold through unregulated marketplaces, which is where most of crypto's, uh, most crypto runs the overseas exchanges. So it's actually pretty simple stuff. I actually include at the end of the book, uh, the, the, the seven red flags so people can read them, but, um, yeah. But as soon as I started educating myself on that, it was it, it was pretty straightforward. So that, that's my next question. What made you want to get into this and, and start investigating crypto? Oh, oh boredom, mainly. <laughs> it was the pandemic and, yeah. uh, you know, the entertainment industry was on ice. Uh, obviously, we couldn't really practice our profession with, with, with COVID going on and not, and not knowing, you know, not having vaccines yet and all that. So uh, I was bored. And I got FOMO, um, uh, like so many other people. And I saw these knuckleheads getting rich on crypto. And I was like, well, they can do it. Um, and I have a history in economics. I, I, a buddy of mine, um, so as to how I specifically came to crypto, um, it's actually the way I think a lot of Americans did or Canadians. Um, a friend of mine said I should, should buy it. Um, and I love my my buddy Dave, but he'd give me like the worst financial advice of my life when I was in my twenties. Um, and he'd encourage me to invest in this company and, and, I, and I'd put some money into it. And I probably lost most of that as did he, I wasn't mm -hmm. scamming. So when he told me I should buy Bitcoin, I was like, mm, maybe, but maybe not. Yeah. And I bumped on that word and, and that sort of led me down this rabbit hole. Um, and it was a weird feeling to be like, look, I, I, I could certainly be wrong. I mean, I am, I am often wrong as my wife and children will tell you uh, if you ask them. But if I was right, this was a massive speculative bubble at best because the economic fundamentals weren't there. And at worst, a bubble predicated on fraud. And so I saw tens of millions of Americans and Canadians, hundreds of millions of people worldwide investing in this stuff. And I thought, well, if I'm right, then these people are going to lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I feel like I had to talk out. I had to speak out. So I was reading my daughter, The Emperor's New Clothes. My daughter was six at the time. And um, I remember the gist of the story. Uh, you know, these tailors trick the emperor and the courtesans and the whole, all of the adults into believing mm -hmm. that these imaginary clothes that they weave are real. And the way they do it is by saying that only the smartest people can see these clothes. Only the people of highest station. And so the con is ingenious because it's just an appeal to, to ego and to status worship. Um, and so adult after adult is tricked into believing in it for the simplest reason of all, they don't want to appear foolish. And, and the second part I, I had forgotten is at the end of the story, as the emperor is gallivanting through town naked and the adults are pretending not to notice, it's a child who calls mm -hmm. out the, the only one brave enough enough to speak truth to power is someone who doesn't know he's being brave. He's simply telling the truth. Well, it was hard not to see myself as that child. I mean, I'm just a, uh, an actor with a 20 year old degree in economics. What do I know? Um, but then again, what if I was right? Um, yeah. And I felt like I had to speak out. So I reached out to a journalist and we started our investigation. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so there's a few, you know, the more popular coins, Bitcoin and whatnot, but 
there are hundreds and hundreds, I would say, of others. So what are, what's the issue with that? Yeah, there are thousands. Thousands. Okay, there, are, okay, there you go. Technically, I don't know exactly where the number is now, but it's like 20,000 or something. Wow. Yeah, which is like, come on, these are currency? Give me a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like we're, we're clearly not talking about currencies. We're talking about investments. Um, yeah, well, well, one fun fact is if you think of them as securities, which I do, because they, they, they are securities in terms of how they function. Um, Bitcoin's been classified as a commodity, and I go into the reasons why in the book, but it's, it's very nerdy and boring, so I won't do it now. Uh, but if you think of them as securities, then the 20,000 unregulated and licensed securities that are the cryptocurrencies is more stocks than exist on our regulated marketplaces, the major, the major exchanges like the NYSE and NASDAQ. It's more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really amazing. So these are the functional equivalent of uh, penny stocks, which are like cheap, cheap stocks that are being traded on, um, uh, you know, on these sort of smaller exchanges. The ownership of them is highly concentrated. There's very few people that control the supply of crypto of these cryptos usually like sometimes as few as like 10 people right. um but but you don't really necessarily know that because um they can manipulate the market via wash trading basically setting up uh, a lot of different they call them addresses but they're basically accounts and you can trade them back and forth so i take a dollar from one hand and i and i put in the other and, and it seems like there's a market um but in reality uh, there isn't and so when real people regular people get sucked in and buy this stuff thinking it's worth something um, they try to resell it and they can't, there's, there's no market there for it or very little. Right. So when you talk about the regular people, you know, they say Bitcoin doesn't have a marketing team, but, um, they, you know, it was all over the Super Bowl, and that you've got celebrities posting ads on their social media. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And I guess perhaps what the response has been from, you know, your colleagues in the industry to your calling out. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my, I love that line that Bitcoin has no marketing department. You know, the idea is that like the product sells itself. Like we don't know who, you know, this all started with this, some, some person or some people calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto mm -hmm. that released the paper in October, 2008. Um, so we don't know who started it. And um, so Bitcoin has no marketing department. Um, well, that's really funny to me because what crypto really is, is just a story or rather a collection of sometimes overlapping stories that form an economic narrative. Um, Robert Schiller is a Nobel Prize winning economist who's talked about this. And they, they form in response to real things. So the, the Bitcoin white paper that was released in October 2008 um, is a response to the subprime crisis, or at least supposedly, and banks were even more unpopular than they usually are. And, uh, people were very distrustful, and I understand why. Uh, and so this story had a certain salience, like it 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 it, had, it resonated with a lot of people because we could agree on the premise that our regulated system, you know, sucks sometimes, <laughs> often. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bitcoin said we could solve that, and then uh, it didn't really take off initially. But then eventually, all these other cryptocurrencies were formed. Um, some of them based off of the Ethereum code, and the story evolved into basically crypto could solve anything. You know, it was marketed as a way to bank the unbanked, build generational wealth. It was going to democratize our financial system. Um, you know, so it was all of these different stories sold by some of the most famous people on earth and targeted to particular communities. You know, the black community was targeted as a way of uh, building generational wealth. Um, banking the unbanked was targeted towards people in other countries that didn't have banking services. Um, but unfortunately, those stories aren't true. I mean, that's the, that's the blunt reality. I'm sorry to be the bearer of the, you know, the bad news, but I document in the book, like I went to El Salvador where it was built as a way of banking the unbanked and being used for menaces. It's not, um, I, you know, looked at the statistics. I talked to people, most people who buy crypto lose money. Um, some people would, of course, but you know, it's like Vegas. It's like, you know, <laughs> of course you can win in Vegas, but if you lived in Vegas and you played every day, of course you're losing because how else do they keep the lights on? Um, so as for my celebrity, uh, my dear good friend celebrities, I don't know these people. Like there's like this myth, not that you believe this either, but like this is sort of like assumption that like we know each other and like, you know, have our weekly celebrity meetings. Like I, I don't know them. Um, I mean, I'd say no some, but I don't, I don't think I know 
know any, anyone very well who specifically hawked them. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. And I started by calling that out because I felt like um, quite cynically it would get some attention. I could break through the, the sort of the, um, at the time in 2021, you know, crypto just wanted to sell you on it. Like just buy, buy, buy. And I had to cut through the, the mess. So I use that, um, but I don't bear any ill will towards them. Um, I think they shouldn't have done it, you know, and it would be nice if one of them apologized for it. But um, um, I think their lawyers are probably advising them not to, because it could like make them liable for it. So yeah. a really long answer to your question, but- just No, that's great. No, no, super interesting. Uh, you briefly mentioned El Salvador, and I'm curious to hear a bit more about the trips you took. I know you went to South by Southwest as well um as part of your research so maybe just talk a little bit about those, those sure. trips. yeah uh, first in-person thing was south by southwest which is a big uh you know music film tech conference in my hometown of austin texas so that was fun uh i went home um to uh to uh, nominally to to do this panel on crypto skepticism with jacob silverman who i wrote the book with and, and another reporter for for vice um and that that the the, the, the presentation itself was more or less a disaster. Like, I was like, yeah, a ton of people are gonna wanna hear this message. Uh, got this huge room, like nobody showed up. It was like a few OC fans, my daughter who I dragged there who fell asleep during the presentation and my parents. Um, but I did have some fun there and I, I met this guy, Alex Mashinsky, who's the CEO, of a, was the CEO of a crypto company, Celsius. Um, he's now been, um, been charged with fraud. He was arrested uh, last week. Um, I visited the biggest Bitcoin mine in the country, which is in Rockdale, so that's out of Austin. Anyway, so, I, oh, and I got drunk with some guys that said they worked at the CIA. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, there's an excerpt in Rolling Stone if you want to read about it, uh, or just buy the book. Uh, that was the first thing. Then there was uh, the Miami Bitcoin Conference, which is, uh, it claims to be the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world. And I interviewed regular people and I... I interviewed some of the leaders of the industry, just trying to kind of understand like what it was about, you know, because I because I was still trying to test out my thesis. Like, I think it's seems to be scammy and fraudulent, but like all these people believe in it. Like, why do they believe it? I'm genu genuinely curious. Um, and what I learned there is that crypto can kind of be whatever you want it to be. I mean, because it's a story, it can kind of just be sort of like a projection of all of your hopes and dreams and desires. It's like it's going to do this for me. It's going to do that for me. And for the most part, it's, it's going to make me rich. I mean, that's why most people. Right? But but they would have their different reasons for it. Um, and then I went to El Salvador, the only country in the world that's trying to use cryptocurrency as real money. Spoiler alert, not working. And then I interviewed Sam Bankman fried uh, in New York. Uh, and then ultimately I testified in front of the Senate after Sam was arrested and the industry was, um, you know, viewed somewhat differently. And I, and I tried to express um, my findings, both in my written testimony and, and, and in my, the five minutes I was given to speak. Mm -hmm. Wow. One of the things that freaks me out the most, I think, is, you know, you can have cryptocurrency in a wallet or some sort of place and then you misplace your password and your entire life savings or, you know, all your retirement is just like poof, gone. You can't even access it. Um, and I know you speak to it a few times. I mean, it's a common theme throughout the book that lots of people have uh, regular people have lost a lot of money just trusting in this in this system. So um, can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, it's really you know, it's pretty rough. I mean, I, I'll tell, I saw a story at the end. The book is very fun, yeah. I think, and approachable. I think it's fun. I try to be funny and I mean, yeah, you know, I, I did my best um, and, and, and just say it plainly and simply so that it's not like um, too much of a chore or too confusing in terms of the crypto, uh, the way crypto works. Um, but I did have to tell a story at the end, I felt to, to, to illustrate what the stakes were with the victims. So I tell a particular story. Um, yeah, so crypto will say that, uh, yeah, people lose their keys in crypto all the time. Uh, crypto exchanges shut down all the time, usually because they stole your money. Um, like, seriously, it's hard to point to an exchange that's, that, that, like, hasn't done it. It's, it's easier to point to ones that have. Um, and so fraud is just sort of rampant. What crypto says is, uh, yeah, everyone has to take responsibility. And, you know, it's called DYOR, do your own research. And if you get scammed or defrauded, you know, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's a learning lesson and, you know, you won't do it again the next time. And for the most part, 
almost everyone I talk to on crypto, most people at least, would say, would just openly say, yeah, I got scammed, but, you know, learned, blah, blah, blah. blah. Really weird, right? I mean, if, if it was your bank account and you lost your password and your bank was like, yeah, sorry, I lost all your money. Like, it could be a weird thing. So I was like, I couldn't really understand it for a while. And then I started reading about fraud and how it works and how con men work and there's a thing in fraud called cooling out the mark where basically you know a mark is like a, a sucker basically it's the person that you're trying to con and when they find out that they've been conned they don't like that right and 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 you really don't want them to go to law enforcement because that would be bad mm -hmm. um and you don't want them to like blame you and try and like you know get vengeance on you okay. so you need to redirect their anger to some something else um anything else and so DYR is kind of genius because it's basically your fault. I mean, it, it's, it's a tell, actually getting back to your question about MLMs, it's actually a tell of MLMs, multi-level marketing schemes, is the system cannot fail. You can only fail the system. Yeah. It gets a little culty mm -hmm. at a certain point. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 it doesn't work now. Yeah, 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 a ton of people have lost money and people lose money for the stupidest reasons. Like they literally just can't remember their, their, their password or whatever. Um, but, you know, in the future, you know, we just need more people to give us more money right now. And then it'll definitely work in the future. I mean, you know, it gets pretty weird. Um, but but it's, it, it is really genuinely predicated on just kind of like a, I'm not saying that the people that buy it intend to, 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 to scam others. I mean, the vast majority of people who bought crypto are totally good, normal, regular people. Um, but unfortunately, like, it's that saying in Vegas, you look around the table and you can't spot the sucker. Guess what? You're it. Yeah. It's rough, dude. But you know, mm -hmm. gotta gotta say it. So that 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 that's kind of my take on um on uh, on how that works, unfortunately. Now I think I may already know the answer to this, but do you have any thoughts on the uh, the virtual worlds, decentraland? Those yeah, I just read some great article that like it's with the metaverse or whatever. There was like five people playing it or ten people playing it or something. Oh. I thought it was hilarious. I mean, to me, it was just like looks like the world's worst video game. Like, I don't even play video games that much anymore. I mean, my kids do, and they are awesome these days, like the real ones. But um, it just looked like these, it was like in like Zuckerberg. So I was like, what? This looks terrible. And then they were trying to convince you that like, you know, the Web3 metaverse thing is like, it's also like give us money and buy these like coins or in-game currencies in order to like, you know, live in these worlds. And I mean, from gamers that I've like, you know, heard about and talked to, like, they don't like it. They're like, stop it. Stop trying to like, it's called play to earn. You know, it's like, you're gonna play the game and earn money by like creating a hard play. And a lot of games are like, dude, just stop. Like, give me, let me play video games in peace, you know? Um, because it's a way for them to make money, um, you know, from you. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a very weird world, but yeah, I think, Versus like, and obviously the metaverse now, now people don't talk about it, you know, now it's like, uh, all of a sudden the, the bros are, are pivoting to AI because, uh, because metaverse is not a thing. Um, even meta itself actually, you know, is like now, now they're, now they're ripping off Twitter or trying to replace Twitter with threads, but you know, all of a sudden they're not really talking about, uh, mm -hmm. about metaverse as much. Interesting stuff. Um, we have just a couple minutes left, but I'm curious, what are you reading now or what have you recently read that you loved? Ooh, that's a good question. What do I have here? Oh, well, no, that's not. That's what I got there. Uh, let's see. I'm just reading this book, The Psychology of Money, which is pretty good. That book. Yeah, that, that's uh, on my list too. Poverty by America, Matthew Desmond. Mm -hmm quite good. Uh, we just put most of my books on the shelf downstairs. I mean, there's ones over there. But yeah, I mean that I mean a lot of our, like financial uh, fraud and crime. I love true crime. Uh, my particular particular favorite subgenre of true crime is what I call stupid crime, where criminals do really dumb things and and end up getting caught, of course, and then turning on each other. It's kind of like Coen Brothers esque. Yeah. So that's one of the things I love about crypto is that like, they talk about community, but if you actually get inside of it, the people that matter, they all hate each other. <laughs> like they're so mad at each other and they're ripping each other off all the time. And not all hate each other, I'm sorry. But like, you know, it's yeah. not it's not a community in, a, in the sense that like, I think we think of it in a, in a positive way. In that sense. Um, 
So yeah, I've been reading about that. There's a great book called Lying for Money by Dan Davies. If you want to, if you want to really geek out on fraud, um, it's cited in the book. But like, I would, I would recommend that. Um, yeah. Amazing. Well, well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Easy Money by Ben McKenzie and, with Jacob Silverman is available in stores at Indigo and online at Indigo.ca. Thank you. Thank you. That was really fun. Have a great day. You too. Bye.